All right, take two. Let me know when you arrive. Oh, I haven't done a live since, since what? Since March or April with the one word stories. I want y'all to be able to see my t-shirt. This is what we're talking about today, the compost cooperative here in Greenfield, Massachusetts. Let me know when you arrive. Send me a quick hello. Let me know if you can hear me. We had issues with the last video. Oh, I'm so excited. So much is happening. So much is happening. And I'm still only going to tell you only a glimpse, only a little bit into what's going on over here. We'll give it just just about another minute or so as folks kind of get the get the alert. Oh, hi, Caitlin. Wow. Um, glad to see you here. It's been ages, ages and ages. Um, Oh, hi, Mama. Maybe, are you on mute, Ma? Or is your computer muted? Um, oh, so excited. Um, oh my goodness, where to even start? Um, I guess I will start talking now, um, since most folks will hopefully watch this, uh, watch the recording of this. So I'm glad and grateful for those of you that are here now um, and to those of you who will be watching this in the future. Um, so um, I may make this live public after I do it. <laughs> um, but for now, it feels really good to keep it to, to friends um, and family. Uh, so many of you know that lots of things have been happening on my end, um, particularly around housing, um, particularly around thinking about um, incarceration and the prison industrial complex and the, the lasting impacts um, of you know, um, incarceration and the ripple effects that that has on whole family systems. Um, some of you may know that some years ago I wrote a play called When the System Swallows You that um, takes a look at sort of my personal experience and my family's personal experience um, with, with all of that. Um, and, you know, I would say, and I think it's fair to say that my, my personal family experience is definitely has, has been what has pushed me to um, look really closely at the system and the impacts of, um, you know, what happens when someone gets swept up into the system um, and institutionalized and put in solitary confinement for years and um, when we don't have access um, with, with regularity to, to family who are, are locked in cages, um, warehoused, um, often experiencing abuse and um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I won't go too far down that line, but many of you know, right, that the system is the system is rigged. The system is definitely designed to keep people in it. Um, and so my work with the Compost Cooperative um, is, is really around working to undo some of that. There's lots to be done for sure. Um, so I'm going to tell you first about the Compost Cooperative in case you don't know. Um, the Compost Cooperative was is is the product of um, something called a think tank. Uh, so here in Greenfield at the Franklin County Jail, a group of folks incarcerated there worked with a team of GCC educators and Greenfield community members um, to really talk about mass incarceration, to talk about the impacts of, of addiction and cycles of violence and cycles of poverty, um, and to really talk about re-entry 
um, and what can make that so incredibly difficult? Um, and what are the things that can, can lead people right back into the system? One of the things that came from that conversation is the fact that living wage work um, is often so inaccessible to folks who carry, carry a record, in particular folks who carry fel felonies. Um, and so the idea was let's create a, 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 a business, right, that really prioritizes pro providing living wage, meaningful work for folks coming out of jail and prison and those impacted by incarceration. Uh, so the Compost Co-op was born. Uh, we are a food scraps pickup service um, serving residential customers throughout Greenfield and Great Falls, also known as Turner's Falls. Um, and and um, so we do residential pickups and commercial pickups and deliver food scraps to Martin's Farm um, here in Greenfield to be turned into compost. Um, and so sometimes we get to de deliver compost to our people. Uh, this is not the major announcement, though. That's just a little bit of content, uh, context for you. Um, so we are cooperative, which means that we are worker-owned. I'm about to be a worker-owner, which is really, really exciting um, for me um, as someone who feels really invested in this work and um, and believes that like we need to be doing things to uh, support humans. Um, and we need to be doing things that take care of our environment. And so this feels like a really great thing. So the Compost Cooperative was built to provide living wage worker owner opportunities for folks coming out of jail and prison impacted by, um, and folks impacted by incarceration. We learned in our two years that that having living wage work is not enough, right? So um, nine out of our 10 uh, potential worker owners experience houselessness um, or housing insecurity. Um, and, and despite tremendous advocacy, Right on, particularly Revan's part. She she's done a lot of connecting with with landlords in the area, trying to advocate for you know our apprentices and advocate with our apprentices. Um, landlords would not rent so to to folks with records. Right, there's definitely legalized discrimination um, against these folks. So. We realized we had to buy a house. So y'all know about this part, probably, right? We're like trying to buy a building. The announcement is, is that yesterday afternoon, our offer was accepted. So we have an accepted offer on a four unit building here in Greenfield, Massachusetts. Um, and we are developing the structure to make it so uh, we maintain affordable housing forever. Right, period. Um, there are ways to do it. It's very, very exciting. Um, and so we are jumping into this process of buying a house. Um, we have a commercial loan. Ha! <sighs> right? Those of you that have gone through the, the home ownership process probably know that um, it is really expensive. Every step of the way is incredibly expensive. Um, and right um and it's doable right and so we really are yeah Kia, thank you we're so excited we're so excited to um be able to move forward in the process um the thing is <laughs> that's really real right is that in order to be able to in order to be able to maintain affordable housing costs and provide rent support as needed and um, really, really fulfill our mission, we have to pay down this loan. We have to pay down this loan as quickly as possible. You know, as much as, you know, we're grateful that this loan has allowed us to move forward um, because we have an immediate need, right? We have a worker owner now who is 
in this moment um, experiencing housing insecurity, right? So um, there is an urgency for us um, and for this person to, to make this happen. But y'all know, you know, when you are looking at, you know, a 300, you know, $310,000, you know, a building um, and you are taking a loan on that, you're talking like what, like four and a half percent? Four and a half percent interest, right? We'll be paying, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars in in interest. So, and unfortunately, right, like that, some of those costs get spread out to the tenants. We don't want to have to do that. Um, and so that is why this campaign is so important to us um, so that we can really actively be providing affordable rents uh, for folks who reside in, in that apartment building, including our worker owners. Um, so um, if you haven't yet shared our GoFundMe, we ask that you please, please, please share our GoFundMe. We have some, I got to look at my notes now. Um, so the thing about when you get an accepted offer, I'm learning about this right now, right? The thing about when you have an, a, an accepted offer is that that's when all the timeline stuff starts happening and starts becoming more clear, right? Of like, so when do... When do we have to have uh, our 5% deposit, right? Um, this is me pulling up my notes. Um, so by October, oh, October, October what? October 23rd, October 23rd, October 23rd. If you can help us get more of a down payment on this house than our 25%, which is like $71,000, I think, that would be incredible. So y'all are gonna keep hearing from me about this project. <laughs> because it's so, so important um, that we're really, really thinking about actual, tangible, radical change-making possibilities um, for, for addressing the systemic issues that this country is, is infamous for. Um, and so I ask, here I am. I ask for your support. Um, please do share, um, share our GoFundMe. Contact me if you're like Trenda. I want to. I want to send a letter to my people. We have samples. You know, you can like go in, just like add your couple sentences to make it yours. Um, we can definitely support you in helping to support us. If you know of people who are like ready to make a significant donation and you want to connect them with us, we'd be so happy to talk with them about what sponsorship at a, at a higher level might look like. Um, we'd be happy to, to get creative with folks. Um, this morning we have an artist who's, who's, um, who's, thinking about who is um, likely going to be contributing a piece of art for a raffle, right? There are so many ways that you can get involved. Um, get in touch with me. I'm going to stop talking because somehow I've managed to get to nearly 15 minutes. Anyway, I know y'all, so many of y'all are holding so much. Um, so I wish you all the best in your journeys. Um, I wish you health and joy and love abundantly um, and let, get in touch. You can send me a direct message or you can email the compost cooperative at the compost cooperative at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find us at the compost cooperative.com. Uh, you can find us on Instagram compost co-op. Um, so find us all in all the places, share in all the places. Thank you for listening to my long winded rambly message. Um, 
yeah, we'll be in touch soon. I'll make sure to keep y'all up to date. All right. Have a great day, y'all. Bye.